Russian President Vladimir Putin delivered a fiery speech today, undermining Ukraine's legitimacy and declaring two pro-Russian separatist areas in the country independent, ordering troops in for what he calls peacekeeping. With the two countries now appearing to be on the brink of war, the White House urging Ukrainian President Zelensky to leave the capital city of Kyiv for his own safety. Here's ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz on the ground in Lviv, Ukraine. U.S. intelligence, the Pentagon, the White House are all washi watching those Russian troop movements very carefully. 150,000 at least Russian troops on three sides of Ukraine. They say they have dispersed, meaning they were in a, a fixed position and many of them have now moved to an attack position. They say many of them are awake at all hours ready to go as soon as they get that final order from Vladimir Putin. And there is little doubt in the Pentagon, in the White House, in the intelligence community that Vladimir Putin will move ahead with an invasion, going beyond those regions uh, that he claimed as independent today. He will move in, they believe, into the capital city of Kyiv in Ukraine. It will probably start with attacks on infrastructure. They've talked about missile attacks into the city and the surrounding areas. I've also been told by officials that this will be a progression. It might be in stages, uh, that they move into one region, then they go into another region. But they believe Vladimir Putin wants to take all of Ukraine. Our thanks to Martha. As tensions escalate, so many people are caught in the middle, including one American family, desperate to get their newly adopted and very sick son out of Ukraine. What was it like when you first laid eyes on your baby boy? It was tears, just as if you had seen your flesh and blood child born is no different. There was an immediate bond there. For Kelsey and Theron Jaggi from San Antonio, Texas, adopting their son Ruslan from Ukraine was a new beginning. We knew that he had severe special needs, but we kind of went into it with the mindset of regardless of, of what he needs, we felt that he, he was our son out there waiting for us, and we were drawn to him pretty much as soon as we saw him. But with tensions mounting in the region and Russian troops lining the Ukrainian border, what was supposed to be a joyous moment quickly turned into a race against time for the young family. Ruslan's visa was the last one they issued before the embassy was evacuated. With the sick child suffering from cerebral palsy and battling pneumonia, the family says a judge waived the 30-day waiting period required for an international adoption. But they say when they got to the airport, border agents wouldn't accept their paperwork. We check our bags, we go through security, we get to immigration, their border guards. They take a while to look at our pa paperwork. They are telling us that the 30-day waive has not been waived. Our paperwork is incorrect. And from there, it was just a nightmare. The Jackies say they found themselves in the middle of an international storm, stuck in limbo and desperate to bring their child home. And by this point, the whole world is aware there's real tension building in Ukraine. We were getting phone calls from people saying, hey, we're really concerned that something is going to happen. Um, any time now in Kiev, we were starting to get really nervous. We ended up driving Monday afternoon to the airport without even having any tickets. The Jaggies' harrowing journey is one of many, painting the picture of a life on the edge in Ukraine. The entire world watching and waiting as the fate of the region hangs on Vladimir Putin's every word. The Russian president addressing the nation today on Russian television. Putin recognizing the independence of two pro-Russian rebel regions in eastern Ukraine, ordering his military to move across the Ukraine border under the guise of peacekeeping. In an hour-long, sometimes angry speech, Putin even questioned Ukraine's legitimacy, accusing its leaders of being a puppet of the Western world that's trying to undermine and weaken Russia. And after days of false flag operations that Western leaders say are manufactured, Putin telling the Russian people it's actually Ukraine attacking, with a warning to Ukraine's leader. Uh, we demand you immediately cease military action, says Putin. Otherwise, all bloodshed will be on your hands. The move could open the way to Russia formally annexing the region, which it has de facto controlled for years in any case. President Biden, for a second day in a row, convening an urgent meeting of his national security team. 
President Biden signing an executive order banning trade in those separatist regions, threatening more severe action in the event of an invasion. The European Union also condemning Russia's move as a blatant violation of international law and promising more sanctions. But weeks ago, when the Jaggies flew from Texas to Ukraine to adopt their son, Ruslan, their singular focus was on their growing family. So we get there January 31st, and um, we are ecstatic. We, we had heard rumblings about the Russia situation, but we weren't too worried about it. Uh, and it didn't seem like Ukrainians were worried about it either. We made the trip from Kiev to his orphanage. We were able to visit with him a few times. They were joined by Valerie, a registered nurse who works with the American nonprofit organization, Exodus. I started four years ago um, transporting disabled, needy, uh, medically needy children from Eastern Europe to um, America for medical care and to be adopted. So for the first few days, we were in one of the um, Eastern regions that is closer to the border. And so already friends and family are worried about us just because of our geographic location. Once Ruslan was safely in their care with his visa in hand, the group headed to the airport to fly home before Ukrainian border agents questioned their paperwork and sent them back to Kyiv. Were you nervous? Did you think you were going to get stuck in Ukraine? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We had, I, we tried to call every person possible. We had the embassy on speaker with them explaining um, that the paperwork was valid. We had our facilitator team on speakerphone and they were frustrated because we told them we are not leaving this office until you let us through. I, I kept pointing it to our son saying, look at our sick child. He is gonna die if you do not let us through. If you make us wait 30 days, he's not gonna survive. As the days ticked on, the situation on the ground escalated as threats from Russia became more imminent. The sense of dread and fear it was like electric in the air. Everything was buzzing. The city had become alive. The traffic, which is always bad in Kyiv, was standstill. Everybody was rushing to the airport. All the flights were almost booked solid. And the airport was uh, unlike anything I've ever seen. There was just panic arising, and which didn't help our panic. We started hearing the, OK, everyone in Ukraine needed to load up on water and weeks worth of supplies. So we said, look, we've got to get out. We were contemplating. Do we drive? You know, do we take a six hour train to the western part of the country? Do we try to find a way to get into Poland? At that point, a lot of airlines, the flights were either full. Um, KLM, who our original flight on Saturday was supposed to be with, they quit flying to Ukraine. Mm. So we were like, I don't know if we're even going to get a flight out of here. Valerie was on the phone with Exodus asking, can you find any way for us to get out of here today? Mm -hmm. um, and while on the drive to the airport, fighting traffic, <laughs> Exodus booked us a flight with Turkish Airlines. And as soon as we got through the immigration checkpoint, I went to the bathroom stall and just sobbed because that was a huge moment of relief. Ruslan is now back in San Antonio in the hospital ICU his parents by his bedside each day, grateful. I love that little boy laying in that hospital bed more today than, than I have before. And they tell us that there's there's real hope for him to progress and that uh, his state that he's in right now is not what he's limited to. And we're very excited to see how he flourished in a home where he's, he's loved and surrounded by people that, that truly care for him. ABC's military analyst Steve Ganyer joins us now. Steve, we've been seeing ominous signs from Russia since Putin recognized those two separatist regions. He's ordered troops into those areas for what he says is maintaining peace. But do you consider this an invasion? Uh, the White House does not consider it an invasion, Byron. Uh, the White House says if they move past the line of where the rebels have controlled that part of the Donbass, that will be the invasion. So we know where that line is. We'll wait and see what happens tomorrow. Putin's moves today suggest war could be soon. The Biden administration saying in the coming hours or days. What do you expect to see as the next moves? This may be that Mr. Putin's trying to pocket some negotiating chips, so we'll see how far he takes this. He could have declared war long ago. So let's see what happens with the, with the Russian military. Do they move into these rebel areas? And then do they take that one step across the line that the White House would consider an act of war? And we'll get you out here in this question. Ukrainian President Zelensky said tonight his country is strong and ready. 
Is that bravado? Is this Putin in for an unexpected fight if war does break out? It's both. Uh, he, it is bravado in the sense that this is a uh, Ukrainian military is quite weak compared to the Russian military. On the other hand, if the Russians go into that country, they are on. Uh, they are going to have a fight like they never imagined uh, because they're defending their homeland, and uh, it's going to get very ugly, very bloody, and it may be something that Mr. Putin is not ready to accept. Steve Ganyer, thank you, sir. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for so much for your insight. Thanks, Byron. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.